Hey guys, so um, we're gonna start calculating surface area and volume of some more tricky shapes. And in particular, I wanna talk about calculating the surface area of uh, pyramids here. Uh, this is also gonna go hand in hand with calculating the just straight up area of triangles when you're not given the perpendicular height of the triangle. And you'll see where that connection comes in in a second. So you'll see on my screen here, I have uh, drawn myself a pyramid. It's a square based pyramid. Uh, and because it's a square based pyramid, all of my uh, slanted lengths going up to the, the vertex of the pyramid are gonna be equal in length. And they're all five uh, units long. Uh, and the base of each side of my square is gonna be six units long. So in order to calculate the surface area of this, uh, Typically, we would break up our shape into its many faces, calculate the areas individually, and then add them all back together. Pretty simple. However, if I think about drawing here my, I'll do it in blue. If I think about drawing one of these triangular faces, I'm gonna get a triangle that looks something like this. Okay, and it's going to have a slanted length of five and a base length of six. Now this is a problem for us because when we're calculating area of a triangle using the tools we have in our arsenal thus far, we know that we need the perpendicular, meaning the height that is at a right angle um, with the base. We need this height, h. And we don't have that. We've only got the slanted height, h. Uh, we've got the slanted height. So we need to use that slanted height in some way to calculate this perpendicular height. And to do that, I'm gonna introduce you guys to uh, the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. It's a fancy way of saying uh, there was this guy named Pythagoras of Samos, and he came up with this formula, um, whether he did or whether one of his people did, we don't know, um, but it's attributed to him. And the formula is like this. I'm gonna draw myself a second uh, triangle here. I'm gonna draw it as a right angle triangle because this theorem only works for when you have a right angle triangle, okay? And I'm gonna label this triangle A, B, and C. And the theorem says, that the C squared or the side C, if you square it, it's gonna be equal to the other two sides squared. Oops, that second one's supposed to be a B and added together. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So we call C, we call this side length, this is called the hypotenuse. Um, and it's always the longest side on a right angle triangle. It's always opposite the right angle. Um, so the, hop up, the hypotenuse squared is always equal to the other two side lengths squared and then added together. So we're gonna use this concept and this formula to solve for um, our unknown side length H in our other one. So first I'm going to say, uh, I might even label this as H in pink because pink is gonna be my working color. And I'm gonna say that, first I'm just gonna state the Pythagorean formula. So I'm gonna say C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And unfortunately, this formula is not set up perfectly for us because we're not looking for the hypotenuse. You'll notice that C is the subject in this formula. Um, so this is currently gonna help us solve for C. We're actually just looking for A or B. It doesn't matter which one's which because we're adding them together. We have an unknown side length that is not one of the hypotenuses or it's not the hypotenuse rather on this triangle. So we need to rearrange. And I'm just gonna say that, let's say that H is A. It doesn't matter if it's A or B, I'm just gonna say it's A. So to rearrange this formula, I need to be subtracting, I'll do this in red, I need to subtract B squared from both sides. And I'm gonna do that here. So on the right hand, on the left hand side, I'm gonna get C squared minus B squared equals A squared. So now we have A as the subject by itself, and I might just flip it. So I get A squared equals C squared minus B squared. Now I just need to substitute in the values that I have. So remember the only thing that matters truly is that C is the hypotenuse. And in my case, this here, this five is the hypotenuse or C, okay? So A squared, which is going to be my height, I might even label uh, this side length here as B. From here to, I might 
to it down below a bit further. So from here to here is B. Uh, notice that the entire length of the base of my triangle is six, but I only want halfway along, okay? So I need to halve that six and I'm gonna get B is three. So I start with H. So A is gonna be my H. So my height squared is going to be equal to C squared. So C is five. So it's gonna be equal to five squared, take away. Now remember, we don't want the full six units along the base, we want half of that. So, from your perspective, half of that. So that's going to be uh, three squared. And so therefore H squared is going to be equal to five squared take away three squared. Now five squared is 25, three squared is nine, 25 take away nine is 16. So H squared is equal to 16. And if we just want H, not H squared, we need to take the square root of both sides and therefore H is equal to four, or the square root of 16, which is four. So we found the height of our triangle. Now when it comes to calculating the surface area of this pyramid, it should be pretty straightforward. We know we have four of these triangles and one square base. So to calculate the uh, surface area, I'm gonna uh, use a different color, maybe green to do this, um, this calculation. I'm gonna say surface area of, a, of the triangle is gonna be base times height, divided by two, that's my formula for a triangle, which is gonna be equal to, now the base of my triangle is now six. Keep in mind, this is the whole triangle's area we're calculating here, so we need the entire base, which is gonna be six, times the perpendicular height, straight up and down, which we just calculated was four, and we're gonna divide that by two. Six times four is 24, divided by two is 12. So we've got 12 units. Now we know we have four triangles, so the, um, uh, I'll come back to that. Let's just do this surface area or just the area. I suppose I don't need to write surface area. I'm gonna say the area of the square base is going to be side squared, which is going to be equal to six squared, which is equal to 36 units. And the last thing we need for total surface area is going to be, and I hope I don't uh, mess this one up, because I'm writing on the edge of my screen, total surface area is gonna be equal to four times the surface area of, or just the area, four times the area of the triangle, because there's four of them, uh, plus the area of the square, which is gonna be four times 12 plus 36. Four 12s are 48. 48 plus 36 is going to be 84 if my mathematics is correct. 84 units squared, and I need to square these other units as well because they're also areas. So the total surface area therefore is 84 units squared. So um, I guess the process here, if you're given a pyramid and you're asked to calculate the total surface area of it, and you're not actually given any perpendicular heights, which on my original drawing, by the way, would look like this. If you're given that height, that's the H, you can straight away just use that in your area formulas and calculate the total surface area, that's fine. But if you're just given the slanted length, you're going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem to actually calculate that third side. So if you want a just a rule, I suppose, um, I'm gonna write this rule uh, right underneath the triangle in a final color, I guess. I'm gonna use red. And I'm gonna say um, the perpendicular height squared, or let's just even simplify it even more. Because to get rid of the squared, we need to square root both sides. So the height is gonna be equal to the square root of the um, slant length squared plus the plus half of the base squared. So that's a bit, pretty fancy formula and you don't need it. You can just go process by process like I did, but if you wanna rush straight to a formula, take your triangle, halve the base and square it, then take the slanted length and square it and I just remembered that it's a subtraction in here. So square the slanted length, halve the base, and then square it, and subtract the half of the base squared 
from the slanted length squared and square root the whole thing. And that will give you the perpendicular height. Now, very frequently, you're gonna get answers that are not really nice, like four. I got four for mine because I constructed this so that I would get a nice answer. Often you're gonna get something like 3.89275 or something like that. In that case, just take it to two decimal places and make sure you note that your answer is gonna be approximate. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any more questions specifically, feel free to write them in the comments below or send me an email if you're one of my students. Uh, yeah, hope it helped and good luck calculating the surface area of pyramids.